Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Terigno here with your Chapter 3 test review for Algebra 1B. Um, remember your test is tomorrow and I will not be here in class tomorrow. So um, please make sure that if you do have questions that you either stop by and see me tomorrow morning or you could email me tonight or post a comment to this video and I'll respond that way. Okay, this video will just cover page 1 and then there will be other videos covering the other pages. So we're starting out with one of our favorite tables again. Um, in this first one, I'm given an equation, and my equation is in slope-intercept form. So right away, I can pull the slope and the y-intercept out, because this is m and this is b. So my slope is negative 4 thirds, and my y-intercept is 4. Okay. And then without having to do any more work, that means my parallel slope is also negative 4 thirds. And the perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal, so that would be positive 3 over 4. Now the x-intercept is a little harder, because to find the x-intercept, we always want to make y equal to 0. Okay? So in my equation, I'm going to say looking for some blank space to write this, up here, I'm going to say 0 equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. And now I'll solve. So let's subtract 4 and subtract 4. So I end up with negative 4 equals negative 4 thirds x. And then the easiest way to get rid of that negative 4 thirds would be to multiply by the reciprocal. So that would be negative 3 fourths and negative 3 fourths. So these will cancel. And when you do this multiplication in your calculator, you should find that the answer is positive 3 for your x-intercept. Okay, looking down at number 2. Number 2 gives us the slope and y-intercept, but we have to write our own equation. So we're really just going backwards from what we did in number 1. This is my m and this is my b, so my equation would be y equals 5 thirds x minus 6. Okay. Again, from the slope, I can get the parallel slope very easily and the perpendicular slope by flipping it over and making it negative. But my x-intercept I'm going to have to do a little work for. For my x-intercept, using up all my good workspace here. Again, I'm going to put a 0 for y. So I would say 0 equals 5 thirds x minus 6. I would add the 6 on both sides. So I would end up with 6 equals 5 thirds x. And then multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 5. When I do that, let's see, that will give me 18 over 5, which I believe is 3.6. Okay, that's it for that one. All right, number 3 is written in standard form. To get your slope when you're in standard form, I'm going to use the negative a over b, which means it's going to be negative. And then it would be 2 over negative 7. But then, of course, your two negatives are going to cancel out. So your final answer would just be 2 over 7. That means my parallel slope is 2 over 7, and my perpendicular slope would be negative 7 over 2. Okay. The y-intercept means I want to make x equal to 0. So when it's not written in slope-intercept form, you're going to have to plug a 0 in for x. That means that really my x term is just going to cancel out, and I'll be left with negative 7y equals 28. So my y-intercept would be negative 4. For my x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y, and I end up with 2x equals 28. So that means for x-intercept, I would have 14, because 2 times 14 is 28. Okay, number four. Before I start number four, I would probably simplify it. So I'm going to distribute this five. 
Now we're going to have to put y minus 12 equals 5x plus 35. And then if I move the 12 over to the other side, I actually end up with y equals 5x plus 47. I hope you can follow that okay. But basically I just added 12 to both sides and that's how my 35 turned into a 47. Now once again I'm in slope intercept form. So there's my slope, there's my y intercept, 5 and 47. Um, my parallel slope would be 5. My perpendicular slope, if I thought of that as 5 over 1, would be negative 1 over 5. And to get my x-intercept, I'll have to plug a 0 in for y. So I would say 0 equals 5x plus 47. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Okay, 0 equals 5x plus 47. Let's subtract 47 from each side. So I get negative 47 equals 5x. And then divide by 5, divide by 5. And let's see, you're going to end up with negative 9.4. Okay. Hopefully, again, you were able to follow that okay. Sorry for all my scribbles in the margins. Okay, x equals 9. Most important thing to notice here is that this is going to be a vertical line. The slope of a vertical line is always undefined, which means parallel line would be undefined, and then my perpendicular slope to that would just be 0. Now this equation, because it doesn't have a y in I'm sorry, it doesn't have a y in it, that means it won't have a y intercept, so this is just none, and my x intercept would just be 9. Okay, so the intercepts are really easy. If you don't have the letter, you don't have that intercept. This one, y equals negative 17, is going to be a horizontal line, which means the slope is 0, and the perpendicular slope then would be undefined. This means that my y-intercept is negative 17, and my x-intercept is none. Okay, number uh, 7 gives you a y-intercept and it gives you a perpendicular slope. Well, if it gives you a perpendicular slope, we can get back to our original slope by doing the opposite reciprocal again. So the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 would be positive 1 half, which means this is also positive 1 half. Now I can say my equation is 1 half x plus 6. So anytime you have these two things, you can make an equation right out of that. And for my x-intercept, once again, I'm remembering that that means y is going to have to equal 0. So I guess I'll go down here for a minute, and I'll say 0 equals 1 half x plus 6. Subtract that 6 on each side. Negative 6 equals 1 half x. Don't get fooled into thinking the answer is 3. This is not saying to do a half of 6. It's saying half of whatever x is, is equal to 6. Really, to solve this, I would be multiplying by 2 over 1, which is really the same as just 2. So final answer here would be x equals negative 12. And that would be your x-intercept. Okay. Number 8 is a little trickier, and I'll be honest, you did not see this one in your table before. Okay, we have done problems like this before. I'm giving you the parallel slope of 10, which means that your regular slope would also have to be 10. But in this problem, I don't give you the y-intercept. So to write an equation, you're going to be in some trouble. What I would do here is think of this negative 5 as the coordinate negative 5 0. Okay. Now I have a point and I have a slope. That means I can use point slope form. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to let's grab a paper here to show you how this works. So remember, point slope form looks like this. y minus y1 
equals m times x minus x1. So my, y, my x1 and my y1 are negative 5 and 0, and my m is 10. So I would say y minus 0 equals 10, and then x minus negative 5 is the same thing as x plus 5. When I simplify this, y minus 0 just becomes y, and I'm going to distribute this 10, so that'd be 10x plus 50. That gives me my equation, y equals 10x plus 50. Okay. The good news with that is now that's in slope-intercept form, so that means my y-intercept is just this number here. My y-intercept would be 50. And finally, my perpendicular slope, the opposite reciprocal of 10, is negative 1 over 10. Okay, so there's your whole table. Okay, now would be a good time to rewind and watch any piece of that that you didn't quite catch. All right, let's look at 9 and 10 that are asking you to graph. So the first one says, graph the line y equals 3x minus 5. If that's in slope-intercept form, and I don't have any other information about it, the best way to go would be to start at negative 5 on the y-axis, that's your y-intercept, and then your slope right now is 3 over 1, so that's telling you from here I should go up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1. Let's connect all those dots. And that would be your line. So I'm just going to write next to this one that this is problem number 9. Okay, so that line there is problem number 9. Problem 10 is a little more involved. It wants to know some pieces of this problem. It's giving you this line and it says what's the slope. This equation is not written in slope-intercept form because y is not by itself. It's written in standard form. And in standard form, slope is equal to negative a over b. Okay, remember that. Slope is equal to negative a over b. So that means I'm going to do negative and then 4 over my b value is negative 5, which means my slope is actually 4 fifths. Okay. The x-intercept is when I cancel out the y, so that would give me 4x equals 12. In other words, the x-intercept is 3. My y-intercept is when I cover up the x. Oh, me. So I end up with negative 5y equals 12. When I divide 12 by negative 5, I get uh, negative 2.4. Now it's asking you to graph. Now, I could do it the same way I did the other one, and then I would start at my y-intercept, and then I would use my slope to figure out where to go from there. But I really think any time you have an x and a y-intercept, that it's easiest just to plot those two points and connect them. So if my x-intercept is 3, that's going to be right here, and my y-intercept is negative 2.4. I know that's a decimal, so it's a little weird, but it's going to be about there. And now I'm just connecting those two dots. And that would be that equation. Okay, so that's problem number 10. Okay. So again, the easiest way to graph, if you have the intercepts all figured out already, is just to plop those two points on the graph. Okay, um, I will start the second page in the next video.